These poems are from Poems 1922-1947 by Alan Tate, read by the author. Ode to the Confederate Dead. Row after row with strict impunity, the headstones yield their names to the element. The wind whirs without recollection. In the riven troughs, the splayed leaves pile up. Of nature, the casual sacrament to the seasonal eternity of death. Then, driven by the fierce scrutiny of heaven to their election in the vast breath, they suck the rumor of mortality. Autumn is desolation in the plot of a thousand acres where these memories grow from the inexhaustible bodies that are not dead, but feed the grass row after rich row. Think of the autumns that have come and gone, ambitious November with the humors of the year, with a particular zeal for every slab. Staining the uncomfortable angels that rot on the slabs. A wing chipped here, an arm there. The brute curiosity of an angel's stare turns you like them to stone. Transforms the heaving air. Till plunged to a heavier world below. You shift your sea space blindly. Heaving, turning, like the blind crab. Dazed by the wind, only the wind, the leaves flying, plunge. You know who have waited by the wall the twilight certainty of an animal. Those midnight restitutions of the blood, you know. The immitigable pines, the smoky freeze of the sky, the sudden call. You know the rage, the cold pool left by the mounting flood of muted Zeno and Parmenides. You who have waited for the angry resolution of those desires that should be yours tomorrow. You know the unimportant shrift of death and praise the vision and praise the arrogant circumstance of those who fall rank upon rank, hurried beyond decision. Here by the sagging gate, stopped by the wall. Seeing, seeing only the leaves flying, plunge and expire. Turn your eyes to the immoderate past. Turn to the inscrutable infantry rising, demons out of the earth. They will not last. Stone wall, stone wall in the sunken fields of hemp. Shiloh, Antietam, Malvern Hill, Bull Run. Lost in that orient of the thickened fast, you will curse the setting sun, cursing only the leaves, crying like an old man in a storm. You hear the shout, the crazy hemlocks point with troubled fingers to the silence which smothers you a mummy in time. The hound, a bitch toothless and dying, in a musty cellar, hears the wind only. Now that the salt of their blood stiffens the saltier oblivion of the sea, seals the malignant purity of the flood, what shall we who count our days and bow our heads with a commemorial woe in the ribboned coats of grim felicity? What shall we say of the bones, unclean, whose verdurous anonymity will grow? The ragged arms, the ragged heads and eyes lost in these acres of the insane green. The gray lean spiders come, they come and go. In a tangle of willows without light, the singular screech owl's tight invisible lyric seeds the mind with the furious murmur of their chivalry. We shall say only the leaves flying, plunge, and expire. We shall say only the leaves whispering in the improbable mist of nightfall that flies on multiple wing. Night is the beginning and the end, and in between the ends of distraction, Waits mute speculation, the patient curse that stones the eyes, or like the jaguar leaps for his own image in a jungle pool, his victim. What shall we say who have knowledge carried to the heart? Shall we take the act to the grave? Shall we, more hopeful, set up the grave in the house, the ravenous grave? Leave now the shut gate and the decomposing wall. The gentle serpent green the mulberry bush, riots with his tongue through the hush, sentinel of the grave who counts us all. Sonnets at Christmas, 1934. One. This is the day his hour of life draws near. Let me get ready from head to foot for it most handily with eyes to pick the year for small feed to reward a feathered wit. Some men would see it an epiphany, at ease, at food and drink, others at chase. 
Yet I, stung lassitude with ecstasy unspent, argue the season's difficult case, so. Man, dull creature of enormous head, what would he look at in the coiling sky? But I must kneel again unto the dead, while Christmas bells of paper, white and red, figured with boys and girls spilt from a sled, ring out the silence I am nourished by. Two. Ah, Christ, I love you, rings to the wild sky, and I must think a little of the past. When I was ten, I told a stinking lie that got a black boy whipped. But now at last the going years with an accurate glow reverse like balls Englished upon green bays. Let them return. Let the round trumpets blow the ancient crackle of the Christ's deep gaze. Deafened and blind, with senses yet unfound, Am I untutored to the afterwit of knowledge, knowing a nightmare has no sound? Therefore, with idle hands and head, I sit in late December before the fire's days, punished by crimes of which I would be quit. Records. One, a dream. At nine years, a sickly boy lay down at bedtime on a cot by mother's bed. And as the two dogs merged, the room became so strange it left the boy half dead. The boy man on the ox road walked along, the man he was to be. And yet another, it seemed the grandfather of his mother. In knee breeches, silver buckled like a song. His hair long and a cocked hat on his head. A straight back and slow dignity for stride. The road, red clay sun cracked and baked, led fearlessly through scrub pines on each side, hour after hour. The old road cracked and burned, the trees countless, and his thirst unslaked. Yet steadily with discipline like fate without memory, too ancient to be learned, the man walked on, and as if to a yesterday, came easily to a two-barred gate and stopped, and peering over a little way, he saw a dog-run country store fallen in, deserted, but he said, Who's there? And then a tall fat man with stringy hair and a manner that was innocent of sin, his galluses greasy, his eyes coldly gray, appeared, and with a gravely learned air spoke from the deep coherence of hell. The pines thundered, the sky blacked away, the man in breeches all knowledge in his stare, a moment shuddered, as the world fell. Two, a vision. At 20 years, the strong boy walked alone, most fashionably dressed in the deserted park at midnight. By the far lights burned low, and summer insects whined with little tone. There was a final and comfortable dark, so that he walked deliberately slow. It was not far from home. He'd been to see his girl, who had sat silent, and alone. Picking his way upon the patched brick walk, it being less dark near the street, he hastened and knew a sense of fine immediacy. And then he heard some old forgotten talk at a short distance like a hundred miles, filling the air with its secrecy, and was afraid of all the living air. Now between steps with one heel lifted, a stern command froze him to the spot. And then a tall, thin man with stringy hair Fear in his eyes, his breath quick and hot, his arms lank and his neck a little twisted, spoke, and the trees sifted the air. I'm growing old, he said. You have no choice, and said no more, but his bright eyes insisted incalculably with his relentless voice. 